welcome to episode two of the Fletcher Chats podcast with your host, Fletcher Finn. In this week's episode, I'm joined by Stevie G, DJ Stevie G, Stevie Granger, government name Stevie Granger. If you don't know who he is, you must be from Cork. He's a household name here in Cork. For over 20 years, he had a show, Black on Red, on Red FM. He's a DJ, he's a radio presenter. He just got a new job with Cork Adorca as their diversion and, in, and inclusion facilitator. So we chat a bit about that at the start. He also drops an exclusive for us about plans he has for upcoming artists in the new year. But just listen up, he will and he will say more about it in this interview in this chat that I have with Stevie Granger. Before I hit play and let you enjoy the chat that we recorded, I just want to let you know that if you're out and about driving home in the car, you can listen to this on Spotify. If you just type in Fletch Chats into Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast, you will find me. I will be speaking into your ear so you can be listening to that while cutting the grass, while working, while doing whatever you want to do. So Make sure to go check me out there, follow me on Spotify, subscribe to me on Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review, hit that like button on this YouTube video, subscribe as every two weeks I will be uploading chats with different people. Um, We have a lot of fun things planned with, I won't let you know, Murphy's Law, I don't want to ruin what plans I do have coming up. So just sit back, kick back, enjoy me chatting to Stevie G and I'll talk to you on the other side of this interview. Much love, folks. I see you cool. shaved. Um, Cheers, so, man. So Ali, Ali got the sack. Ali is gone, man. I was shaving straight away. Yeah, no, re- this is no disrespect to the guy, but uh, they had to change it up. Yeah, I heard that the board were going to keep him, and then they saw your Instagram yeah. comment That's saying it, man. you're going to shave. Uh, Are you a football fan? Yeah, I support Arsenal for my sins. Oh wow, well, um, you, Arsenal and Man United are going through a lot of the same stuff over the years, like so. Yeah. Although at least they're on the upward curve at the moment. I know they got a bit of a game. A bit of a tonking the other day, but but they're, they're they're doing the right thing with the young players and stuff, you know. Yeah, at least there's a kind of I don't know a goal yeah, or a plan a system. Yeah. system in place. Exactly. That's how is your United are just going from game to game. That's not good. Enough, it's though. dreadful, all right. Yeah, especially that's, with the that's players. Rid of him. Yeah, that's good rid of him. How is the spring cleaning going or oh, winter good, cleaning? Man. I've got this side like the the whole like I'll show you at another time properly, but all of this side is nearly done now. So I moved. My decks are over there, and I move my controller is kind of here. Um, so yeah, it's just trying to work. There's millions of records. Now I don't buy them anymore, really. Like, but uh, I've just been. I got my studio set up here as well, so I can do some beats here. But it's you good, man. It's getting there. To the attic. It's yeah. I, I I moved up here like ten years ago when my second kid was born. So Priorities. I had to take his room had to be moved. So luckily we had a bit of room here. And, we 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 re, re, we did, redid it. We had the space, so we just cleaned it out. Okay, and, my, my and friend so, did it for practically nothing as well. So we didn't have to spend any money on it, really. Like, and if I was to say, what is your most treasured vinyl that you have in there with you? What would you What um, would you go for? We might even be able to get a visual on this now because I have them pretty organized. Um, this side are organized anyway, but I have one in mind. That is very special because I bought it. It only it only came out kind of for one day. Yeah. Uh, on Black Friday a few years ago. He released this on vinyl. Uh no, it's bootlegged heavily, but this is the real, the real blonde vinyl by Frank Ocean. Oh. And it only came out officially for a day. Like I have bootlegs of his other stuff. But this one is very uh treasured because it's very hard to get on vinyl, and it's it's also one of my favorite records. So that would be the one I'd be thinking of straight away, you know. But mm-hmm. I've loads of um, like I've loads of signed ones by artists and stuff like that and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but the blonde by Frank Ocean because he's probably my favorite artist of the like. Even though I have artists that I think about from all the years, I always think of the No, and he's my favorite of No. So that that okay. would be a treasured one anyway. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um. So. Let's just go all the way back. What what did young Stevie? What was young Stevie into? Did young Stevie always want to be a radio presenter? Did young Stevie nah, want man. to be? Whoa. No, so like young Stevie wanted to to play soccer, like you know. <laughs> um, so my my big switch happened when I was about eleven or twelve. I think I um, I think I realized I wouldn't be like uh whatever the the best soccer player in the world, and I kind of realized, uh, even though I still hang on to the dream a little bit. But um, 
Uh, so I actually got for, for something happened anyway. It was way back in the day, but it was ha it nearly happened overnight where I went crazily into music. I don't know what it was. It was always there around me, but I just went went wild into it, like in the same way as I had been into football. Now I still maintain my love of, of football or soccer, but that was the thing. But ambition wise, I never had any kind of thoughts of in secondary school. Maybe I was thinking about writing about music and stuff. Uh, definitely no ambitions to be like I didn't even really know there was no DJ culture around the place didn't think of that uh, radio no it wasn't on my radar because radio back then was just non non-existent to me um, so yeah it just fell into music but even when I finished college I was planning I had started to write about it and I was thinking maybe um, doing that and then I'd already been DJing then and so I said look I'll do this for a while and here, here's the one. <laughs> okay, yeah. and like, when did you? It. Yeah, when do you realize that this can be like more than a hobby? You know, because everyone has hobbies. Like you said, football yeah. yourself. We all love football, but yeah, we're not all making money off football and well, doing exactly. it as a living. We're um, spending money on it. We're spending. Yeah, that's our, it exactly. Our, our five are on a Wednesday night. Or <laughs> um. Yeah. So it was. It was probably a good time. So it was in the 90s. So that's what I was kind of emerging. And it was a time when there was a big club scene all over Ireland. And one thing led to another. Like I started DJing in a pub and I was in the main club in Cork within literally two weeks. Again, I just fell into it by fate. And then I was like a year later, I was DJing all over the country. So the next thing I knew, I was kind of like, it never really became a kind of a decision. So because I loved, I mean, even when I got my first kind of gigs anywhere without even thinking about even the money, which wasn't that great anyway. But I was mm -hmm. just like, oh, my God, it's amazing uh, to just be able to do that. Like it was just like my ultimate like job kind of thing. And to be honest, still this day. And that's one of the things that's frustrating me now that like I've got like so much like I just want to DJ but at the moment it's kind of like it's it's tricky because of uh, restrictions and blah blah mm -hmm. blah and different clubs are, aren't open or whatever but it's just one of the things that I've always loved so that's my main even though I do lots of other stuff like teaching and do other stuff radio and all that DJing to people is my favorite I uh, think that's my yeah that's my ultimate job and like, I end up I doing it for 20 plus years so now. yeah that's great uh, i had questions for the end because on instagram yesterday i put up a poll saying or a questionnaire box saying if you have any questions ask in but it kind of just fills in there's a guy yeah. uh, one of my mates paul dorrington he's a dj himself and he asked um how do you stay motivated to keep djing and continuously listening to new music so obviously you've been doing this for a minute so yeah where how do you still have that kind of motivation and hunger to continue to dj yeah if you look at the average, that's actually a great question. So I noticed that a lot of people, and I even saw seeds of it myself at a certain stage, I think a lot of people start falling out of love with it and seeing it as they see, even like you notice how DJs are so much, uh, they, they're like, oh my God, this person came up asking me for this and it's annoying me and I hate that. <laughs> like, as far as I'm concerned, you, first of all, you still are an entertainer, right? Like your job is basically to try to, even if it's something terrible, just be a bit respectful to them if they're respectful to you. But to 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 follow that stuff like that, especially if you're especially if you're deep into music, it can be annoying when you see someone you're like, what the hell are look at what they're looking for, man? Like I'm so, uh, I, I my my tastes are so much better than that. So I know why people can get annoyed by it, and also people are like, especially if you've been around for a time, as you say, like. Like lots of the music does don't know. Um, we'll say if you look at we'll say house music, it, it was some of it was out in the nineties. Original tracks have been sampled from ten years ago, uh, from twenty years ago, from 30, 40 years ago, which has always been the way. But people kind of who were there the first time around will always like, oh my god, like why is someone sampling that track? Which I, I remember was yeah. twenty. So you you become more and more. But to be honest, if you think of it, it's always been that way, right? Like when. Elvis came out way before my time. He was recycling what like um, the blues musicians, the rock and roll original black musicians, to be honest, were, mm -hmm. were doing. Uh, and it's the same way with everyone throughout history. Uh, it's always like there's always always still a bit of innovation involved. But the cycles of things like, for example, two of the biggest 
bands in musical history are the Beatles and the Stones. And mm-hmm. there were both white English bands, one from Liverpool, one from London, who literally made their career at the start by by just covering um, uh, black American R&B and, um, and rock and roll. And that's how they established themselves. Now, they went on to be innovators themselves. Um, but people don't realize that, like, so and these are held up as like the the or 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 originator Godfathers Jagger and Richards for mm-hmm. Stones, Lennon and McCartney they all wrote brilliant songs but like to start off with they were just cover they were doing covers both of them were and they would be seen now as being like kind of like untouchable so I'm like the way I always look at it is um music always goes in cycles I'm always hungry for the newer stuff because especially because I, I work with younger people and it yeah. keeps you kind of buzzing then uh, with that youthful energy because the youthful energy, uh, which often cuts off when people are, we'll say, late 20s, but most people have have it when they're especially teenagers or early 20s. And if you can channel that youthful energy, it's also a lack of cynicism. So as people get older, they definitely get be- more be- uh, become more cynical. So if you will see anyone now who's like 30 or 40 or whatever, and they're like, oh, the music of today, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, it's like, it doesn't even, all the songs sound the same. And I'm like, <laughs> that's officially when you're old, right? Yes, because we all think our generation's better than the one coming now. You Always, know? man. Oh, back in Always. my day, X, yeah. and back in my day, and yeah. And, and it will happen if you're 21, so you're, mm-hmm. look, people are listening to what the 12-year-olds are listening to, go, oh, look at all that TikTok stuff, it's rubbish. Yeah. I mean, weird. And I'm like, what did you have, man? You had Soldier <laughs> Boy. He's the same thing. Like, yeah, so he, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. probably the, the start of that whole thing. But it's always, if you look back and people say it about everything and it's throughout the history. So mm-hmm. I would always try to keep an open mind. No, don't get me wrong. It is weird when, like, most people my age aren't listening to whoever, Playboy Cardi or whatever. No, you know, no. They're kind of like, and there's some bits of it for me, I'm like, but at the same time, if you can kind of, I don't know if you're open enough to it, like lots of the stuff, the best stuff has been made by artists who are like young teenagers, uh, early 20s, mm-hmm. whether it's drill or trap or Afro or whatever. So it's just to answer the question in a really long way. It's just <laughs> almost like you almost have to kind of um, just be open to it. Mm-hmm. But it, the natural thing is, and we've studied this on radio, the natural thing is most people, it's a certain nostalgia of teenage years mainly but most people are into what they grew up with. 99% of people are. And that's mm-hmm. why even when they're 25, they'll be like, oh, like what well, music was much better when we were 15. But that's a natural thing. Um, but uh, there's other people like I, I, I buzz off the new stuff. OK, that's that. That is quite interesting because most people don't kind of, um, as you said, we, we kind of sit and be happy with what we had when we were teenagers or mm. what we had when we were younger. Um, yeah, so that, that answers that question. And I just saw, I was doing some research on you yesterday or research on you. I was creeping on your Instagram, basically. Uh, and I saw that you're now the new um, diversity and inclusion um, facilitator of uh, Corkadorka. Um, yeah. Congrats on that. How did that come about? Thanks, man. Yeah, so Corkadorka, a theatre company, we've been going here for 30 years. Now, I'm not from the theatre background, but I've always been aware of them. They were always kind of interesting because... There was a club in the 90s, Sir Henry's, which is a club we used to DJ at. And I never forget, Kirk and Durka were going in there doing a show. And we were like, wow, theater, going in to do a show in a club. And it was actually Disco Pigs and Killian Murphy, the, the famous actor from Cork. He could, mm. uh, it was his first big break. So they've always been really good for breaking new talent. So in, in, in some ways, they've paralleled the way the club scene was here. Uh, but they're brilliant. They always use different spaces. So theater can be a bit like, you know, everyone's just sitting down and it's a bit stuffy sometimes mm-hmm. to some people. So they've taken a lot of it outdoors. They've done some stuff here in parks. Uh, they've done some stuff here in different places out in the streets. So I've always been aware of them. And they got on to me over the summer because I put up a post about something. One of the things, one of the projects I started up was this it was everybody dance so i do lots of work with people yes in, i've seen in, that yeah it's so very it's, good yeah it's cool so it's it was mainly out of work i was doing with people with say additional leads mm-hmm. so there's some people here i work with in down syndrome center in cork i was just with them today just call out and then there's uh clown kilty co-action it's for uh, adults with some some different different kind of needs mm-hmm. Uh, so there was a couple of different things i was doing and i wanted to put a bit more attention on it because there's loads of these people are, are, are operating uh, with no funding and there's but sometimes mm-hmm. we just do something simple like a party 
there's one kid that I'm teaching how to DJ um, and he's got whatever. I don't even know what he has, but I don't care. But when the music is a great way of breaking down anything, right? Breaks the barriers. All the right, whole thing it? about exactly everybody dance was about inclusion. Like I've never uh, like it could be someone like music could be a way of you might it mightn't work. You mightn't work in the school life or you mightn't work mm -hmm. in the you might be able to work in the bank or whatever. But music is a great way where it's just music we're all the same you know we all party mm -hmm. everyone responds to it sometimes if you've got a physical handicap you might not be able to dance physically but you can dance in your wheelchair or whatever yeah 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 um if you're deaf it's different but there's different ways of communication but music is a great way so to cut a long story short i wanted to do, do a bit of promo on the everybody dancing which is still developing i'm still just doing parties and they saw it and they were like oh this is cool cuz they were having a sort of a similar thing because they're coming from the theater which we would say is like kind of almost like a high art it's sort of um it's more it seems to be more of um and it's ironic it didn't come from that but it seems to be a kind of almost like for the middle classes sometimes yeah, yeah. upper like, echelons of the people like yeah. yeah it's just the way just the way it is no matter what and no there's been great examples of that not happening including with Kirka Durka, but they decided that they're doing these casting calls all the time and we all live in a world where we're all a lot more aware now of uh inclusion and diversity mm -hmm. in the last particularly like post george floyd there's been a bit a lot of talk about representation yeah and if you look at like we work with kids all the time from a migrant background and the kids are looking at their teachers and none of them are none of them they're all look white like them, uh, they're yeah. all white Mm. Uh, we see it in the government. We see it in the Gardaí. Now there's exceptions and it's changing. There's one or two uh, people moving in politics finally and things are s slowly changing, but not fast enough. And they mm. they had this experience with casting calls. So they put out a casting call for an actor and all the actors are like white, middle class, whatever. So they're like, we have to actively change now. And it's the same way as we use the example because Pat from Kirkadurka is like me. He's in the, the football and soccer. And if you look at it, for all their faults, if you look at what the FAI have done in with regard to um, representation in the last couple of years, yes, they, exactly, they really yeah. showed about when there's when there's a black Irish player now, mm -hmm. uh, they're really kind of like pushing the narrative. They're really going and trying to, when it comes to coaching, they go to certain areas. And even my local club that I'm involved with, they've kind of, like some of it is off the radar, but like if, if it's someone from a direct provision or whatever, they might be able to arrange, you know, they don't have to pay fees or whatever to play mm -hmm. all. Like mm -hmm. just, there's, there's it ways. It does in, make, it does make a huge difference. Because I think back to when I moved to Ireland, I moved mm -hmm. to Ireland when I was eight. And um, and for the Irish national team at the time, my yeah. favorite player was Clinton Morrison because I was like, yeah, he's yeah. the only one who looks like me, you know? Exactly. And man. so now you fast forward these years and now you have Chiloza Ekbene, there's Adam oh, Ida, there's, there's Bazunu, you know what yeah. I mean? There's just yeah. so many that it's like, ah, oh, that could so be me, stars. you know what I mean? So yeah, it's, 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 it's good to see. And as you said, yeah, the FAI does get a lot of slack and lots of it deservingly so Absolutely. Um, but their their work with inclusion and their yeah. work with diversity is is and great it's, to see it's the it's what happens it's you can't solve it overnight it's like the soccer team themselves they've only they're only kind of on the little upward curve mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. but this is what what you said the eight-year-old right like my mm -hmm. kid is nine now right and there's kids we've got massive diverse group on our team but it's great for all of that age group and the younger ones again and the women as well because women's soccer has just gone um, gone gone huge and all sports yeah. but it's it's really cool what it does the spark it does because sometimes it almost psychologically you're like geez this mustn't be for me like you know what I yeah mean? uh the irish tea and i know like you've got people like um Ogbene grew up um who wasn't even born in ireland some of them have been born in ireland so mm -hmm. you've got irish people from a black background with, with thick dublin accents some of them have got yeah different exactly accents. yeah yeah, so, yeah. Um, but it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing and it's a great way of um breaking down barriers but the lads decided that getting back to the Kirk thing, it's mm -hmm. it's not enough to just put the ad out or whatever you have to actively. And since I do a lot of community or like I'd be connected, we've just, they, they asked me to kind of be that bridge. No, thankfully we went already and we have an artist from South Africa, Neo, who started a project already. Uh, we, we went and actively got her to, to, to be an artist in residence. So I'm the kind okay, of bridge between it. Cool. Yeah. And she's going to do something from her perspective. She lives in direct provision here. She's been here. She came here in the lockdown of all things, which is, and you go to direct yeah. provision then, which is a, a permanent There's, state of lockdown. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. 
So no, we're excited about that, but I'm just excited about the opportunity. And, and again, it's just like, I'm not going to say it's going to be like, you know, I'm just doing, I'm just course, a, little, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little thing in it, but it might, it might in the long run might help. Might morph again, into something huge. Yeah. It could be, I and I, I and let, let's face it, I am that person, you know, I am that white male guy, who, <laughs> you know what I mean, who is represented, mm-hmm. but, but my job here is to be the, the bridge, as I say, you know. Yeah, and where, because what, what kind of stands out to me about you, like I follow you on Instagram, Um, I obviously, like everybody knows you, I remember the first time I ever heard of you, uh, I was, I was thinking I was in a first or second year, and they were like, Stevie G, did you listen from the radio, and I was like, Stephen Gerrard on on Red <laughs> FM and they were, no 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 Stevie G Stevie G and, and I was like oh now I know who this guy is um but what what kind of stands out about you is your your constant the light you shine on on on, on people on lesser known people on uh people who are just releasing their first ever track and you're there supporting and then people who are who normally would be marginalized and so where does that come from where does that kind of because we, we all live in this we all we all have the ability to do this but not everyone does it. So where does that even come from? Um, well, I think that definitely comes from like I I was just doing my sections here, and I've got my rap section here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just doing all my stuff, and all of this music came from like a marginalized, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you you mentioned the word marginalized, it's like everything came from this wasn't uh, the mainstream part of life. So if you look at hip hop history in the Bronx or in Brooklyn or wherever. Back in the day, this was at a time when New York, a big glamorous city, which we all have an image of, was being more or less left for dead, whether it was the post-war Vietnam thing where they were kind of flooding the ghettos with drinking drugs. Mm -hmm. There was a kind of a marginalized population of migrants uh, from Jamaica, from all over the world. Some of them were Irish as well. But that's where the music came from. And like almost sometimes, if you want to go really way back, when music came over from Africa to North America on mm-hmm. ships or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes when you take everything off someone, all they can keep is what's in their head or their chants even. And when that slavery went to the fields, there was people chanting and like, you can't, you can take everything else off. You can take all the possessions, their clothes, you can rob their gold, whatever mm-hmm. they had, mm-hmm. uh, rob their, you can do all the horrible stuff they did. But sometimes the music, almost the spirit stays right through music. So mm-hmm. for me, the music of the spirit was hip hop, which came from funk and soul. And as I'm saying there, I'm tracing it back to Africa, tracing it to Jamaica. Probably bits of Ireland has traveled all over the world too in a different mm-hmm. way. We weren't taken. It's big. Yeah, it's yeah, different, of course. Nar- it's a different narrative. So what I can hear in the music, if it's Kendrick Lamar, or if it's whoever, Tupac, Lauren Hill, mm-hmm. or whoever the hell it is, you can hear the the pain or you can hear the voice no if it's an irish artist if it's salami if it's denise chayla mm-hmm. you can hear the you can hear the history the, the, the so for me it's just and like from a fascination point of or from just a like that's interesting to me if i can hear so from an artistic point of view i would that's the stuff i'm drawn to like whether it's hip-hop whether it's afro beats whether it's whatever but when it comes to my position of privilege will say in being on the radio or being wherever else Mm -hmm. I I would just say straight away like that's like the first like I have to that's my job as far as I'm concerned not in a kind of like you don't kind of think of like oh not not as in tokenism I get what you're saying yeah Yeah. yeah, yeah, so it's just a natural thing to um, and especially you always want to hear that the most exciting thing as a DJ is always trying to get the new thing as well, like trying to be what's the, the, the new thing, what's the fresh thing. No, uh, with respect to the old school as well, but there's a way mm-hmm. you can do it all. Uh, but to me, that's uh, no, obviously there, there are some situations where you have to ha- have to consciously go. It's a bit like what I said with Kirk Kodarka. You have to go find the person making theater that it mm-hmm. might be. Um, the 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 theater people in Ireland mightn't necessarily be reading the Irish Times or whatever. They mightn't be like on your Facebook or whatever. Who's who's even using Facebook? Who's under yeah, yeah, yeah. twenty five mm-hmm. anyway? So you mm-hmm. have to actively go and and there's other barriers to like there's there's language there's other things. So sometimes you just have to go and dig it out. But so for me, it's I'm always trying to find like I will be like you doing the exact same thing on Instagram is trying to find out. 
who's making the beats or who's doing yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Now sometimes we do leave it leave leave it slip a little bit because it's we all have everyday life that we gotta get to. Of course, to. yes. But yeah. it is my job to be uh to be like I that new school thing I'm doing, which I started last year, is more or less a platform for the new school. So we've already had we ran a gig in Cork and Test Site where we had all pretty much new artists and I did one in Fitzgerald's Park with emerging artists. So there's there's I have the opportunity, people ask me all the time, oh you want to play you DJ bring some artists and I'm like okay we got yeah, 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 so yeah. so it's brilliant so again I'm lucky that I have that opportunity um cuz not not everyone does but uh obviously I made that myself true reputation blah 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 but it's 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 a it's a two way thing and also when you're with people from the start of their careers they do generally appreciate it like you know most people yes. do they help so you get it back like you know yeah 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 is, you give something and you do get something yeah. in return yeah to get the mm. shine back as well yeah and the first plays as well yeah <laughs> that's it exactly that's it yeah. exactly um and also you, you said back in the 90s you started and you had a big uh you're a bit heavily influenced by hip-hop and stuff um mm. was that kind of common were, were your classmates also into that as well or did you kind of just go mm. above and beyond in that kind of immersing yourself in that yeah like i think all teenagers would be into anything rebellious you know i mean mm -hmm. and again it's something that people talk about no because they're hearing rap and they're given like it's like you're hearing the echoes of the generation so it could be and even some of the stuff that happened like like pop smoke came out a couple of years ago he was like biggie mm -hmm. and then he got shot like got shot, biggie yeah. and pack just when he mm -hmm. was starting and I'm like, this is the, and I remember I was, we, we had a class with, with the kids that uh, we were teaching at the time and they, they were all like teenagers and Pop Smoke to them was, they probably didn't even really know Biggie. And mm -hmm. I remember the day I was like, oh, Pop Smoke got shot dead this morning. And they were just like, it was just like, and I remember the same when I was around one Biggie or whatever. So I, I, I think uh, rebellious kind of like, like hip hop speaks directly to people in a way that like, it's not abstract, it's quite direct lyrically. So I think that always um, hits people. Um, but back in the day, let me see, I suppose, yeah, people were into it, like what, whatever was coming out, whatever was popping at the time, can I kick it or all these mm -hmm. tracks were out. But it was still seen as a bit of a novelty thing. I suppose when I got to college and I started f f DJing, it kind of became, I oh, would have been kind of like, people probably knew I was a bit deeper into it, but I just kind of just, took it a bit more seriously like the music i just it was everything to me i suppose yeah okay that's good and then how do you how do you go from being a dj in sarah henry's to then red fm knocking on your door and becoming um having the show like black on red yeah. and just being a household name you know um, <laughs> well it, it was all we did there was no like commercial radio at the time wasn't really on the there was very little you know i think 96 were in cork maybe in the 90s there was no red there was no so i definitely our generation were more into like mixtape culture and um we had a pirate station which was started in the mid 90s which i did i did like three shows a week there i was on it all <laughs> the time and i eventually kind of had enough the music was just blowing up and i was quite busy in the clubs but i eventually i wanted to actually go into the more the bigger realm when it comes to radio i like i love pirate radio it's literally like an attic like this we just mm -hmm. had decks and we just had a microphone and an aerial and you're broadcasting and i loved it i did it for many years but the commercial radio came and i i found out that red were coming and I found out that they were going to be doing like green on red was Irish, pink on red, which is like LGBT. And I heard that they were going to do something black on red, and which was probably going to be. So I was like, I probably would have got the call anyway, to be honest, because I was mm -hmm. definitely the most qualified to do it. But when I heard that, I actually went and just chased it. And I wrote a big proposal, about 30 pages. And they were laughing at me when they saw it because they were like, look, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> um, and I just ended up just chasing it and uh, being aggressive and got the show which is 20 years in January so I'm really proud of that and we've got some big stuff that we're announcing actually I can announce it now because oh you're exclusive. the man exclusive here exclusive. we go whoop, whoop. Well, there, huh? <laughs> yeah we got some um the BAI who fund radio uh are doing some we're doing some black on red specials in the new year with uh, either eight or ten Irish artists emerging or upcoming. Some of them are known okay, already. Okay, that's good. And I'm going to be doing a little um, 
piece on them throughout the show and we're going to be bringing them down to the studio doing some interviews talking about their own careers doing a little bit of a one-on-one and yeah so i'm going to be going heavy on that and i'm also doing a new school documentary voiced by youngsters which i've been doing for myself over the last few months for black on red so yeah i love radio okay, man. that's it's, very good it's cool because it's just a direct line to people. And even in the internet world where everything is like, we all have our own channel now, like you're mm-hmm, on your channel mm-hmm. on Instagram or Zoom, even anything is a channel. Now. We all have that platform on our phones. Yes. But yeah. it's still radio can be um, can be quite special. You know, no, it's obviously a very mainstream. It's got its certain kind of limitations, too. But of course. at the same time, it's why podcasts are popular now or why whatever is popular is that we do like that that kind of one-on-one thing that like no matter what you do on Spotify there, there can be that relationship and if if you're talking to me now and if you're playing a track you like I I am going to get a vibe off it the, like yes, there's that exactly, personal yeah. thing and it is quite an intimate thing you know when you're listening to it in the mm-hmm. car or at home or whatever yeah the person's so, parts of your life you know especially yeah like when you're commuting and you're there for mm. an hour or whatever of the day commuting yeah. that's five hours a week the person which everyone is doing a lot yeah you know so moment. there's still there's still obviously a place for it you know i listen to yeah. podcasts all week and all that Big kind time, of man. stuff you know yeah, you're good at this anyway, man. You're good at this game. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully, I, I I enjoy it. I made a nice list of people I want, and cool. the first two I had your name, and I had obviously Salami because he, oh, wow, he, he had his I'm EP, honored. he had his honored, EP um, release last week. So yeah. um, I'm gonna turn the interview around now, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw you. You're working with GMC up. Um, yeah, we did a lot of work together over the years. And in the cabin, did, yeah, in the cabin. That's it. And like, how did you get into that? And then obviously I want to go more into detail also with um, a- MC Abdul. Okay. Like, because yeah. oh, I saw you, you gave him light on, on Instagram. And I remember I followed mm. him. He had like 200 followers or whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah. you know, let me, let me support this little kid. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's giving it socks. He's giving it heart. And then one day I just say, what MC, what's MC Abdul doing? When it's on his Instagram page. 300,000 Instagram followers. Yeah, he just blew up man. overnight. And I yeah. was like, how did that happen? Does yeah. that must that must make you feel good oh, knowing that you put you put him out? Yeah, yeah. You know? well, I'll give GMC the credit on that one, to be honest, because he met him first. Um, mm-hmm. I was always doing workshops, so particularly from the early 2000s, I did this thing called Where's My Where's My Future? I did Step It Into Tomorrow, and I did the future sound of Cork, which is a bit like what the new school is now. So I was always doing that kind of stuff. And I had a thing on radio called Teenage Thursdays where different teenagers would come up every week. I'd write about them in the echo and blah, blah, blah. So I was always interested in doing it. And what, again, what I always noticed, because I had my jam, my main night was jam and I had jam junior, which is a teenage night. I always noticed that, again, like I said earlier, working with the people, you get the energy back and you get the loyalty back and you get the... You know, they're the people like Mm -hmm. there's no point in having like a bunch of like 25 year olds. If you're doing a teenage disco, they're not your market. So Mm -hmm. when I started Jam Junior, the break dancers, the graph, uh, the DJs, the MCs, everyone except me was a teenager. We'll say practically Mm -hmm. Uh, the DJ Susie K. She was about 12 or 13. She's amazing. I'm so old now that I actually (laughs) did her wedding a couple of years ago. But anyway. But it's 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 actually so the people who come out of that era were Ian Ring, Boku, who we've labeled with. Um, he he was a teenager in the other room. GMC was one of the rappers, producers, mm-hmm. Boney. All of these people were the kids at the time, but they end up. So GMC and Boney and Boku, Ian Ring are three of the people who are teaching the next generation now. So it always. Yeah, I, I grew up listening to uh, to Boney when he used yeah, to the, the, the rap battles. You know, yeah, and they had a uh, um, the they're fighting sick. Irish. They're good. Uh, they're very good. All yeah, of those, yeah, yeah. And those and that those ge- that generation of rappers, and you talk about Mickey Gatch and Nash and Brazil, yeah. like the Dutch called Kid Boney, mm-hmm. uh, G- all of like there was some battlers there, man. There were some guys who would uh, Buckle Donna obviously was around. Like there mm-hmm. was some there was some talent. Be wonder in that generation. So a lot of them ended up being the kind of the teachers now gmc took it to the bigger level with the cabin which is supported by musical generate music generation that's up in Nahini, right up in Nahini, mm-hmm. yeah um so i would have done some bits of them up up there but abdul 
he got to know through just some online teaching. And there was another guy in Cork involved in that project too, Liam, who actually teaches in Mexico. He ends up teaching Abdul English, but we just got to know him. And I just ended up literally just kind of just giving it a bit more hype because I have my, my platforms. Mm -hmm. And we, we did a bit of behind the scenes stuff with him, coaching him and just life stuff. Like his family are great. But GMC would have done more work with him. I would with the have lyrics and stuff. And yeah. Yeah, I did one, I think, uh, main one. But it just blew up because a few people got in there, like Khaled, DJ Khaled. I saw that. And, I uh, saw Bella that. Bella Hadid as well. Um, mm -hmm. People who were quite, and especially in the Palestine, um, the Palestinian story is kind of like, again, I was talking about a lockdown earlier. Like they are in a permanent yes, lockdown. Yes, and then it's when you saw... When he when you watch his videos, he's literally walking through places and is yeah. just destroyed by rubble. And mm -hmm. it's like it's crazy to see his light that's shining in the midst of like. And he's such a good kid, and he almost sounds like he dropped from the nineties. Like it is insane. It is yeah. insane. What I'm gonna do if you're watching this, if you're watching yeah. this, I'm gonna put like a twenty MCA second of yeah. him speaking because yeah. the accent just comes. You see him. You see where he's living, and then just the yeah. American accent just pops straight yeah. out. Yeah, because he great. grew up, he learned English through rap, like you know, like mm -hmm. most of us. And he's the most amazing, smart kid. He's like we've got a few of the young ones here in town, like MC Tiny as well, who works in the cabin, is the same age. Mm -hmm. But Abdul Man, MCA rap, he's just uh, like, and he's got some like people in America are behind him now as well. And we, we'd like, like, you know, there's like he's definitely going places, but it's just. It's a good thing and it's a good story and and again it's like these are the stories that like like we all know about like new york you know we all know mm -hmm. about whatever but like mm -hmm. rap is global now and um and it's interesting that there is a car connection through the cabin but it's it's palestine and places like that there it's not almost like like there's it was it was in the news for two weeks last year like you know the george floyd thing was in the news for maybe four weeks yeah and it just Black Lives Matters was, yeah was maybe six weeks mm -hmm. and this is the way we know it's just the way the media works the way the world works but it shouldn't be like we have to kind of almost we have to keep the spotlight going you know mm -hmm. uh like i know there's some people in cork like we've got a good Palestinian relationship here. We we've got some brilliant restaurants and people. Yes, and there. the cafe Yaz yeah, or something cafe like that. Is, is yeah is yeah yeah, um, yeah. And there's a there's a local gym here. This guy who does the podcast. Um, he he he's he he's actively gone over and built a, a gym. We, we did some fundraising for that. Where a guy in Cork went and built a gym in 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 Palestine and stuff. So okay. there's all sorts of brilliant connections. But uh, and there's a there's a big Irish Palestine Palestine kind relationship of relationship anyway, yeah. Um, but it's uh he's great and it's just mm -hmm. yeah it's just a story that it's kind of refreshing because it wasn't a gimmick thing you know what I mean? That's it exactly. It wasn't uh, fake. It, it was just, just he's just yeah. being himself and it just yeah. blew up. And I think yeah. that's what the people kind of yeah. That's why you're able to support something like that because you can yeah. see this. This is just him. He's mm. just himself. He's just not. Yeah. He's not trying to be someone else. That's ah, brilliant. Um, it is good. It is good. Let mm. me. What I'll do. I'll jump to another question. I picked three questions. So this one comes from the wonderful um, Salami um, on oh. Instagram. Salami underscore, underscore sound. Yes. He just said, "What is your best or favorite celebrity encounter?" So oh, wow. you've opened for so many great Snoop, yeah. Kanye, Jay Z, yeah. um, Destiny's Child. What would be your your favorite like celebrity moment or encounter? Yeah. Well, it's a bit boring, but I have to say Kanye because he literally came to our club. And now I had DJ with him a few times before, and I had never met him because it's just the way like these people just go in and they're they're the security are there and they're just mm -hmm. like even though I was warming up, he's probably like backstage and. In the green room or whatever, yeah, 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 yeah. No, lots of them I did get to meet and sign the records. I've a little chat and I've interviewed some of them, but some the likes of Kanye and Snoop are on a bigger level, you know. Mm. Beyonce got to see for like two seconds, and yeah. she was only like Destiny's Shell were only on the up then. But the Kanye so basically, you're cool. saying you shone the light on Destiny's Child, and oh, if yeah, it yeah. wasn't for My you, friend. if it wasn't for you, there would I'll be show, nothing. I'll show you something brilliant here while I'm talking. <laughs> But the Kanye one was the best, man, because it was our club and it was our club night jam. And we knew he was coming. We knew he was coming. Or sorry, we only knew he was coming at the last minute. So that's a sign to Destiny's Child. To um, Stevie G. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah, that's cool, man. But anyway, the Kanye thing, to cut a long story short, 
I was told that day that he might come through after and could I get the VIP room ready? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we didn't even have a VIP room. <laughs> and um, But I didn't tell people, the, only a couple of people in the club because I was going to look like the biggest idiot. And also everyone in Cork would have turned up and it would have been like a, a riot. Yes, yeah. So to cut a long story short, I did the gig that night. I think it was the 808s and Heartbreaks tour. And I was told again, at nine or whatever, look, he's going to come. Like, so be there at 11, be outside in the street. Five SUVs are going to pull up. He's going to be in the third one. And I'm like, are you guys for real? <laughs> and sure enough, at 11 p.m., five SUVs went to the third one. And this tiny guy came out. I'm like, hey, can you, boy? <laughs> so, <laughs> he was cool, man. And he was couldn't have been nicer. Now, this is the mad thing. Uh, the public persona is just like, oh, this guy's like... Arrogant, and then back then he was even crazier than he is now with the kind of persona yeah, aspect it, of it, you know? It was around the time of the Taylor Swift thing. I think it was before that thing. But anyway, to cut a long mm -hmm. story short, we got him into the club. He got a, I got him a, he wanted a Hennessy. So <laughs> shout outs to Hennessy there, big hip hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it wouldn't be Kid wrong Cuddy, if he didn't. Kid Cuddy came about and no, no, he was really friendly, Kid Cuddy. So he came in about 40 minutes later and I got him a point of Guinness. But Kanye was, I, I kind of got a terrible photo with him. It's really bad. It's so uh, embarrassing. But, uh, and I kind of was talking to him for like a couple of minutes and left him be with all his security people. And then he came mm -hmm. on and did a couple of tongues and later just said goodbye. But he was, he was super That cool. must have been surreal. Yeah, you know? it was cool. Because the I, 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 I uh, wrote something for the Echo the following day and I sent him the pictures and stuff. And the front, the evening echoes, the front of it the following day was, can you believe it? Ah, oh, oh, like, great, great, great headline. But it was cool because <laughs> he was, um, again, like he was, when the music was on stage, like he was just like this, like, you know, he was just so, you could see he's just like a music, whatever, like that's his Wizard, thing. yeah, like, genius. Yeah, he was just thinking about it. He was really like getting into it. But uh, it was at a time day and night was out with Kid Cudi and they both jumped on and they did that. And they did a different Kanye track, which he had done with the group who were playing with us, NASA. Bit of an obstacle. I wonder, is that the best ever? club night to ever happen in Cork. <laughs> well, the thing Kid is... Cody and Kanye on yeah, stage together. The thing is, there was only about 200 people there. And even when he was there, there was so many security around that people couldn't see that he was there and people didn't believe it. The word was there that he was there. I was like, no, he's there, he's there, he's there. And then people were like, that's bullshit, man. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. But like at one o'clock, he just jumped on in the day. And then everyone was like, I, I had videos and stuff. But it's cool, man. Uh, he was... Yeah, that was that was definitely the one. So good question, Salami. <laughs> if so, you're listening and you haven't listened to Salami's EP, people, go exactly. on to Spotify. And Salami forget about EP. Kanye. Forget, forget about Kanye. Kanye. Go back to Danda after you finish listening yeah. to the EP. It's so good. And it's so good to see him um, getting his shine as well. And it's yes. cool the way it's good to see the love he's getting as well, you know? Yeah. I was um, sick, so I couldn't go to his party, but it's cool the way his... Um, doing the listening parties and yeah it was good because we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for so long because we all knew he had the bars like you know we all knew it and he would give us sneak peeks on instagram yeah. but he but, wouldn't release but he's released now um, he's playing so, the long game too man yes he does he, he's making the us want more he's playing hard to get out. it playing hard exactly. to get exactly yeah. um and then the final question came from a guy called josh o'regan he has a page called josh's underscore jam where he's cool. he, into music and stuff. And so he was asking, cool. how can Cork become a destination where more artists um, will want to come and perform? Because, That's you know, cool. any artist comes, it's, it's to Dublin, you know? Yeah. So what, like as a guy who's, who's a in question, the music man. game, what would you say? How can we make Cork a bit more attractive? And it's a good question. And it kind of annoys me sometimes because we had like 50 and Kanye twice, mm. three times actually, Jay-Z. Uh, we had all the big pop stars like Lady Gaga and all that. And I'm like, how come Cork, like everyone loves coming here. We've got the, like, and when something's on here, people come from Limerick and Waterford, which are brilliant musical towns as well. Mm -hmm. Some of the best rappers in the country are in Limerick and Waterford, right? Mm -hmm. Which people come from Kerry. So like, it shouldn't always be everyone going to Dublin to see Drake or whoever, right? So Cork has got it, but like, whoever is in charge of like like we were meant to have this event center like 15 10 years ago they've been saying that for so long so by the brewery yeah they've so been saying like that that's so ridiculous long. that 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 hasn't happened so we need better venues we had a bigger venue the savoy which is gone it's going to be apartments or whatever so that that's a shame that our infrastructure isn't always there we've got some nice clubs like cypress avenue but they're still 
it's mo- most of our clubs are just top like top 40 clubs or whatever mm-hmm. so we need a bit more belief in the infrastructure of it uh i personally think it's a tough time for anything like because even in dublin like lots of the clubs are turning into hotels yeah um, they've got the tree arena they've got the but we have uh, in ireland we have like you can see it with longitude you can see the population are hungry for and music, not just hip-hop like music, but like yeah. it could be drill it could be afrobeat it could be trap it could be whatever r mm-hmm. house dance so in cork every year like they've got independent park they run outside gigs now they've got um the marquee but like that's for a couple of weeks but i think a permanent venue and a couple of bit m- more things like that and i do think our government need to support like venues and music and the whole mm-hmm. cultural knock-on effect that it has like everyone buzzes all the restaurants all the taxis all the people yeah it benefits everybody yes yeah and the big problem then as well is like at the moment when like clubs like i do my main work in clubs like besides mm-hmm. like i do some teaching and all that as clubs, well yeah. and radio but like clubs have been effectively closed for 18 months they're open for two or three weeks, oh two and weeks now- and now they, know, uh, they're sort yeah. of saying they what was your reaction to that i'm like this is like you you're victimizing again the music industry because even if you're doing all the stuff like like getting your certs or getting people like mm-hmm. like we want it music industry called for testing for ages you know for mm-hmm. like antigen tests and at least you have an idea then if so like i covered recently and i discovered it true myself tested myself then i got the official but like there's a certain degree of like you're not tr- everything in ireland is not about trusting people par- particularly young people but mm-hmm. like there has to be some degree of um, respect shown to like the music industry of because like if you look at ireland as a as a, a brand it's all like okay me default uh, we're welcoming you uh, <laughs> unless you're in direct provision then it, yeah. the other thing in the brand is like oh the crack and the cure like the mm-hmm. crack isn't like the american crack yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, the yeah. Irish crack and the cure is the, and music. the music. Yeah. So you're marketing the whole thing about music and partying and drink. Mm-hmm. And okay, sometimes the drink um relationship can be a bit whatever, but at the same time, your whole thing is about this is Ireland, come and then you oh yeah, but you can't go to a club after like you can't go to the off license after 10, you can't go to the club after what's it now, 12. 12 and like yeah. like there's and you look at the schools, man, that's where the COVID is flying around everywhere. And those kids aren't clubbing, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a bit like you don't trust the people, like, you don't trust. Mm-hmm. And there's so much uh, barriers to nightlife. And like uh, Joshua or Josh said, um, uh, like, you know, like, this is the desk, like, people want it. Like, we all, there's a hunger for it. Like we're yeah. all chatting about music here. Mm-hmm. Like, people mm-hmm. will probably watch it and be listening and people are interested. You look at like people went to see uh, Salami's uh, uh, listening, listening party. thing. And people are so listening. so many people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So people are, there's a hunger for the culture of music. Uh, we're all passionate about it and it should be treated with the same respect as um, any kind of business or any mm-hmm, kind of mm-hmm. um, any kind of thing. So I feel really strongly about it that like we pay lip service to it. Like like you'll have some politician going to see um, whatever. Like you know he'll probably go and see the it funniest just, one. I think the funniest Timberlake one was yeah. The funniest one was when it was announced that you can't have festivals in Ireland, and then a video emerges of yeah, our, our, our man Leo uh, over Tonstra. Yeah. yeah, our man Leo over a festival over there, and it was just like this is yeah man like it's. It's like an episode of South Park or something. No, um, it's it's like I feel really strongly about it that like we've got a we've got to respect it. Like um we've got um it's just your scene is like I've always kind of just if one door closed, I try to open another myself, but like it is <laughs> frustrating that like like your livelihood or whatever, like people's like, living, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Like that people like people's full-time jobs are DJs and people's mm. full-time job is, is the hospitality sector. Yeah. And, and all the other stuff that people don't see, the sound engineers, the other people in the Oh, background. the cleaners even, you know, like people exactly. are doing jobs. Have, have, have Our lost stuff, everything. And yeah. I think like, again, I've survived myself, whatever, but it's just, it's just frustrating. And sometimes I've seen politicians as well, kind of like, oh, like uh, there's other jobs available in whatever, <laughs> like, and it's like, it's a bit of a kind of like, do you know what I mean? Like sometimes people have trained or sometimes they're not trained, or, but the people have put in the work to, to be like, it's a bit blasé to sometimes say, you know, you're, you're mm-hmm. work. But I think 
things like music and art and culture has to be treated like with, with a lot more respect. And because some of the same politicians are going to be the ones, uh, if there is a, a big festival, if whoever's popping at the moment, if it's the weekend or someone is mm-hmm. live and someone's going to be up the front, like getting their selfies. But like, or if it's an Irish artist, they're going to be all over whoever's gone through. If it's a Denise Chyla or if it's an Erica Cody or a Salami mm-hmm. or whoever. And they're going to be taking the kind of like the credit and they're going to be getting the free tickets or whatever. Well, yeah. you, you got to support the culture uh, from from the ground up. Like, and I think like from working with you all through the years, I think there's a lot of stuff that's going on with like people in the voluntary. And it's like what I was saying to you earlier, but working with people with additional needs, like I was in a place today where they're doing brilliant work with these with these people. Who, and it's not funded. It's self-funded. And I'm like, hang on. This isn't fun. Yeah, though. it is crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. Like I did. So I studied four years of social care and friends oh, work man. in the sector, you know, and it, it is crazy. Just the lack of funding, the, the, mm. the, like the want for people to do more in the sector, but being yeah. held back by the lack of funding. It is quite sad to see. And it's right. breaking people who are going in doing the best and then they're mm-hmm. becoming disillusioned and the, the people oh, who will work at it. And all that. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, like people do, and, and let's face it, we're all talking about mental health all the time. Like, you know, mm-hmm. Like people are taught, but it can't be just a billboard. Like it has to be. It can't just, just be like, a, a catchy 140. Yeah, an Instagram character. post. Yeah. Thing. It's yeah, like it's, what it's, we were talking crazy, about right. earlier about Palestine or George Floyd or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like or it can't be just like your, oh, this is your little kind of like thing, man. It's a bit. The token once token. a year thing. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So crazy. I think music, and um, I answer this question in a very elongated <laughs> way as usual. But I think we have to take it all. We have to really respect it. Like, because we all do. Most of us, like, you know. But mm-hmm. I think everyone has to kind of see it and support it. And because it's tough now, like we live in a world now where artists don't get a, a royalty check. They don't get a, you know, it's like Spotify, like <laughs> you want to be like, so. It's crazy, Spotify. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like yeah. the streaming numbers is yeah. crazy. I got, um, be, I got an email. I used to do YouTube. I used to do, I used to go yeah. to Arsenal matches and do vlogs. And I got an email saying that I have a check and I was like, here we go, hundred thousand views. How much money am I gonna be? Am I gonna be checking? Am I gonna buy a house with hundred thousand views? And it was like nine euro seventy five cents or something like that. Oh, I was like, they yeah. barely get me like a sandwich and a coffee. And, and YouTube is a lot better than Spotify. And YouTube is so much better yeah. than Spotify. Yes, uh, we had a mil- one of our tracks with, that I did with Boku Ian Ring. Above that, uh, it's uh, it got a million on Spotify. Um, and now we, we got a few bob like, but like. In Spotify, if you were to work, if you were to be a full time artist, like, like it, it just doesn't. Um, whereas that's why there is a bit of a move towards the band camps or even selling merch and selling physical. Yeah, stuff. you need them. Dash, um, yeah, and trying to develop a, a fairer kind of system because a lot of people put a lot of money into the art. It's not just mm-hmm. you in the studio. The studio costs money. The bands cost money. The mixer, the master. Yeah, and then you're taking time off marketing. Work to go and the market exactly. money and yeah it's 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 a lot so, of money going in and that's why i suppose it's so important to get live events back because you can make them way more yeah. money doing a live event than a, a track yeah. you know and um, promote it and everything else so yeah mm-hmm. no i feel passionate about the fact that we've got to support our music and culture and then that supports some of the other things we were talking about some of the social stuff as well like you know yeah. a lot of people involved in the arts are are kind of pushing stuff like that Mm-hmm. So there is a way of making uh, things a bit better in that regard. Okay. And but, the last question, I think I said that last time as well. That's the right, last man. question um, is if you were to give the people one album they have to listen to before this week is over, what album are you saying? Old or new? Anything, anything. What should, I, what should I, I'm working from home tomorrow. What album should be on my list to listen to tomorrow? Okay, well, we've got a classic Kanye there, my beautiful. Oh, hi. Obvious, but Frank Ocean's Blonde is probably my favorite of the last 10 years. So Frank so Ocean's Blonde, people, give it a listen this yeah. week. Listen to um, it clean through. Um, yeah. You saw Adele dropped her album and she, she took off the shuffling button. Georgia Smith. Yeah, like she's she's right. I mean, I don't think it's the biggest uh, problem in the in No, the obviously world. not, no. <laughs> but, but at the same time, it is good. Like the artists are programming. If you look at here, for example, Stevie Wonder, my namesake. Yeah. He did this album back before i was born but like 
the way it was programmed, this double album, and the way it was, um, how do you, what's the word? The set list that they just do it out, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, I try to do that with my mixtapes or when I'm DJing as well. Even a Spotify playlist, I try to have it as a kind of like make it go that way. But I think it's good to to do it that way. And she's got a bit of industry power, so at least she's she using it she for wants, the, yeah. the right way, man. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And where can people find you, Steve? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere. Uh, so we've got uh, so it's Stevie Granger, Instagram, Twitter, and yeah, they're the main ones. Really. And the Stevie Wonders podcast, great podcast. Yeah, I haven't been doing it for the last while. Um, so, but there's I've still like been, 18 episodes people can listen back. Yeah, to. there's about I'd say there's just definitely more than 10, maybe 15. Yeah. But um, I've got yeah, I just I really wanted to get this new school thing in the way. So I've got a couple of other Instagrams. I've got one just for vinyl, which is called Stevie G's Vinyl Love. And I've got um the new it's the new school as well, which is uh, all about platforming new artists through hip hop and talking about hip hop history. But it's all from a a, a young perspective. It's mm-hmm. it's it's hard to explain, but I'm I'm going to be promoting that. So there's a few Instagrams are the main ones. I'll put all on. that if you're listening. I'll put Thanks, all the hints in in the description below. And thank you, you man, because you're great at this and you're a natural and it's good. Like you, it just goes to show you didn't waste all the time on Arsenal. You, you, <laughs> you, can yeah, present, you got something you back pre- from it. Yeah. You can present really well and, and that's good, man. So not, that's really good. So I wish you all the best and I'll be there to help anything. All and the I'll best. Pro- promo it as well, man. Do perfect. Perfect. And I'll chat to you soon. And everyone else, I'll talk to you in a couple of seconds. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> DVG for joining me. Major, thank you for listening through this. I hope you enjoyed it. I trust you did enjoy it because it was, it was quite a good chat, if I can say so myself. It's quite a good chat. Nothing really else we need to add. We've been chatting for an hour. Let's wrap this thing up. Much love to you all. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you again in two weeks. Bye bye. <laughs>